At over 100,000 tons, aircraft carriers are arguably one of the most formidable vessels afloat, but does that automatically mean that every other vessel needs to keep out of their way? I was once on the bridge of a commercial ship when I received a call from a US carrier over the radio. This is US Carrier 1. You're instructed to keep at least a thousand yards away from us. Over. Now, we were in international waters at the time, which does lead on to an interesting question. Do military vessels have right of way, and do all other ships need to follow their instructions and keep clear? Before we get to the answer, I'd just like to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game. In Conflict of Nations, you get to choose a real country to lead during World War III, where you'll fight up to 128 other players, in real-time games that can take weeks to complete. Don't worry though, you can play with the same account on both PC and mobile, so you can manage your forces from anywhere. With aircraft carriers, jets, nuclear submarines and so much more, you can build up your forces and declare war on your neighbours or forge powerful alliances with other players. The choice is yours as you set your own strategy to engage your nation in epic battles and take over the world. For an exclusive gift, click on the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is only available for 30 days though, so don't lose time, sign up today. Anyway, back to the video where we'd just asked whether military vessels have right of way over all other vessels. Well, actually most of the time military ships are treated the exact same as all other vessels at sea and they have to follow a strict hierarchy that determines who has right of way. In a broad sense, it's pretty logical and is based on how easy it is for each vessel to actually manoeuvre. A regular, power-driven vessel is the most manoeuvrable and needs to keep out of the way of vessels not under command, vessels restricted in their ability to manoeuvre, vessels engaged in fishing, and sailing vessels. Sailing vessels are the second most manoeuvrable, so they need to keep out of the way of everything except power-driven vessels, and finally vessels engaged in fishing slot in line having to keep out of the way of not under command and restricted in ability to manoeuvre. As you can see, vessels not under command and vessels restricted in their ability to manoeuvre do receive priority over pretty much every other vessel, which makes sense because by their very definition, they're going to struggle to keep out of other people's way. Not under command means that due to some exceptional circumstance, a vessel is unable to manoeuvre as required, so it could be that they've got engine or steering failure or some other emergency that makes it impossible for them to avoid other vessels. Restricted in your ability to manoeuvre is a little less constraining because the restriction comes from the nature of your work, so maybe you're laying cables, working with aircraft, or dredging. So how does this relate to military vessels? Well, pretty much every military ship nowadays is essentially a power-driven vessel, so they have the exact same status as every other power-driven vessel, so they're treated the same as cruise ships, cargo ships, and even small personal boats. They don't get any special rights, so when they're approaching another vessel so as to involve risk of collision, they're treated the same as everyone else. They could be the giveaway vessel, or they could be the stand-on vessel. In a crossing situation between two power-driven vessels, for example, the vessel with the other on her starboard side is the one directed to keep out of the way, regardless of whether they're military or not. That hierarchy that we mentioned earlier, of course, could override the situation because if we swap out one of the power-driven vessels for a sailing vessel, suddenly the power-driven vessel must keep out of the way. A 100,000-ton supercarrier approaching a small sailing dinghy with no other special circumstances in play would have to keep out of the way. Of course, the supercarrier could swap things around if they became restricted in their ability to manoeuvre. One definition, of course, is a vessel engaged in the launching or recovery of aircraft, so if the carrier was undertaking flight operations, then they do effectively gain rights over and above those afforded to them as a power-driven vessel, effectively forcing every other vessel to keep out of their way. Of course, the carrier does need to communicate this with other vessels somehow. I mean, it's fairly obvious if you can see jets actually taking off from the deck, but it's a little harder to notice if they're holding a steady course for an aircraft lining up a few miles out. During the daytime, you'll notice them raising three black shapes in a vertical line, a ball, a diamond, and another ball, while at night you'll notice the shapes replaced with three lights, red, white, and red. This is the official way of telling other vessels that they are restricted in their ability to manoeuvre, effectively telling everyone else to keep out of their way. Of course, modern technology has come a long way since these requirements were established, so you probably also noticed them updating their status on their AIS and possibly also making VHF broadcasts warning other vessels that they're undertaking flight operations. 
In my case, when the US carrier called up on VHF, they were not showing any signs that they were restricted in their ability to maneuver and regardless of the fact, no risk of collision existed because we were gonna pass at a safe distance from them anyway. They requested that we keep a thousand yards away from them, which is around half a nautical mile. Now, I don't know if you've ever driven a large ship out at sea before, but half a mile really isn't as far as it sounds. In the case of a supercarrier, which is over 300 meters long, half a mile is approximately three ships lengths. When you have a vessel weighing hundreds of thousands of tons and the vast expanse of an empty ocean, passing within a couple of ships lengths of another vessel seems unnecessarily close. The problem is that every vessel will have a different interpretation of what close really means. A small yacht would probably be happy with 100 meters or so, while a large commercial ship might start to get twitchy getting within a mile. With such variance in what each vessel considers a safe distance, it's hardly a surprise that international regulations don't actually place a limit on it, preferring instead to simply state that action is required if a risk of collision might exist. If you're passing within half a mile of another vessel, it's quite conceivable that one vessel may believe that a risk of collision exists, while the other might be quite happy that there is no risk. When a supercarrier calls up another vessel requesting they keep a thousand yards clear, it's most likely because that is what they determine to be a safe distance. If the other vessel has already determined that no risk of collision exists and they continue to monitor the situation, then they've already fulfilled their obligations under international rules. Increasing the passing distance would, however, probably be regarded as good seamanship. In fact, international rules do state that you must take any precaution required by the ordinary practice of seamen. You could say that when a military vessel calls you up and issues an instruction to keep out of their way, a prudent seafarer would probably take note and do as requested, even if they've already determined that risk of collision does not exist. Does that mean that the carrier automatically has the right of way? Well, no, but if they are conducting flight operations, they might do, and if they call you up and request you to take action, if it's safe for you to do so, then it may be interpreted as a demonstration of good seamanship to comply. The question of whether requesting other vessels take such action is in itself good seamanship, well, I'll leave that for you to judge. Again, a massive thanks to Conflict of Nations for funding this video. For your exclusive gift, click the link in the description and you will get 13,000 gold and a month of premium subscription for free. Don't forget, this offer is only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. Click the link in the description, choose your country and fight your way to victory.